So one of my favorite things about gaming is the vast array of different experiences the medium offers. But it's no secret to anybody who's been around this channel for a while that my heart and soul rests primarily in JRPGs. Unfortunately, because JRPGs are so long, I find myself playing fewer and fewer games every year and getting less of those unique experiences than I would like. Thankfully, there is an entire world of really short games that offer fantastic experiences that can at least somewhat fill this void in my life without taking me away from the other things that I love for too long. So what we're doing today is looking at a handful of these games that you can beat in one sitting for the adventurous and eclectic players with very little time on their hands. For the purpose of this video, we're considering one sitting to be at around five hours or so, but that is a very flexible number. Also, I'm reaching out to my fellow RPG creator friends here on YouTube to help fill out this list some and give it more variety than I would have been able to on my own. So without any further ado, allow me to introduce you to Taylor from The Gaming Shelf. Taylor, take it away. Vanquish probably pushes the limit of what's considered a short game, but I don't care, you guys need to hear about this game. So Vanquish is a third person shooter by Platinum Games, so you know you're in for some awesome action. Now in the game you play as some soldier dude from America fighting Russian space terrorists. You know, honestly it really doesn't matter, because Vanquish is all about the action. The key gameplay features that make this game so much fun are the sliding and the bullet time. Basically you can slide around the environment with your guns, and you can get all these different cool angles and hop between cover, it's just so much fun. And also while you're sliding or just running around, you can do bullet time, so it makes the action even more fun. Now all the sliding around at high speeds and slowing down the action, this could get exhausting over the course of a normal length game, but thankfully Vanquish is kinda short, around four to five hours, and recently it got a 4K 60 frames per second remaster, so this is really the best way to play the game, and it's the way it's deserved to be played if you haven't played it already. Ready. Now if you have an afternoon to kill or just want some high energy action, you gotta check out Vanquish. Vanquish is indeed an incredible game, I can vouch for that one. Now our next guest is a bit of a YouTube legend, he's been around here for a long time, and he always has a story to tell. So Johnny, also known as the Happy Console Gamer, take it away. Thank you Mr. Tark's Gauntlet for having me on and I just have a very very small story, a little one. From 1998, a certain game was released called Mega Man Legends and we didn't really know what it was going to be like, was it going to be a good game. We're used to playing Mega Man in 2D and we're going to go full 3D with this one. So I went out and I bought the game and I put it down. I didn't even put it in because that night I was going out with some friends and we were going to this big party. And so I went to this big party, never turned the game on, went out, and I got super, super drunk, like, oh my god, and drinking all night with my friends. We had the best time ever until the very next morning when I woke up and felt like absolute death. And I'm like, oh my god, I feel so terrible. And I'm like, how am I going to survive the day? And I got up and I made tea and I tried to feel better. Nothing made me feel better. I was just like, oh my god, and the day felt so long. And then I looked down and remembered I bought Mega Man Legends and I'm like, okay, let's put this in. And I I really went in, just throwing it in, kind of low expectations. I felt like death. I didn't think anything could make me feel good. And I started playing this game. And in one sitting, I finished the game and I completely forgot about my hangover. I completely forgot about everything that was going on that day except Mega Man Legends. And that's why it was such a, a fun game for me. And I think, you know, I think this is for like games you finish in five hours. I think this is a bit of a cheat. I think it's about seven plus hours that I finished the game. But man, what a memorable day. And for some reason, I always remember being hungover and that game saving me. That game saved me from my hangover. And what a great game, an action RPG kind of, uh, kind of esque style of game. Brilliant stuff. You know what? That's a game that they really need to remake nowadays. As I said, always a story to tell, and it's great to hear. Thank you, Johnny. Now, the next game I've talked about before, but it definitely deserves a place in this list. So, take it away, me. <laughs> Before Your Eyes. 
Before Your Eyes is a fantastic narrative adventure game on PC that utilizes your webcam and eye tracking mechanics for its means of progression and interaction. Though seemingly gimmicky, it is a gimmick used with incredible narrative importance and helps create a sense of immersion rarely equaled. It tells the story of a recently deceased man being ferried to where the fate of his eternal soul will be decided. The ferryman, speaking on his behalf, asks for his life story. And so we turn back the hands of time and look at the man's life. Anytime the player blinks, the plot will progress at random intervals, making it so you see the man's life literally unfold before your eyes. And what a life it is. Growing up under parents with divergent philosophies, shy, introverted, awkward, and immensely creatively talented, falling in love, dealing with loss, and learning to cope or struggle with repressed emotions and memories that eat away at the edges of his subconscious mind. There is a lot to unpack in this journey, and it's one that's sure to leave its mark on any player. Before your eyes can be beaten in just under two hours, but it's a game you'll keep thinking about long after the credits roll and your bleary eyes have dried up. An easy recommendation for anybody who likes anything thought-provoking and pretty emotionally ravaging. Now our next guest is a little newer to YouTube, but I would like you all to give a very warm welcome to Miss Bubbles. Hello, I'm Miss Bubbles, and a game that served as a palate cleanser to me after playing hours and hours of Assassin's Creed Valhalla was Donut County. This is a story-based physics indie game developed by Ben Esposito, the designer behind What Remains of Edith Finch, one of my favorite games of all time. I usually stay away from any game that goes around physics or puzzles or anything like that, but this one is completely different and I highly encourage you to try it. Donut County is is full of charm, wholesomeness, and chaos all at the same time. You play as BK, a raccoon that can create holes in the ground and steal people's trash. But this time, you have gone too far and you ended up stealing entire houses, cars, shops, your friends, and even yourself by mistake. So here you are trying to remember how you got everyone in this situation and you get to replay flashbacks to remember. In each level, you start with a small hole which then gets bigger and bigger as you steal more stuff and there are some instances where you can create special effects by combining different items together. There are some very light puzzle mechanics but they're nothing to be afraid of. I'm someone who's very bad with puzzles and I still figured it out so I'm pretty sure you're gonna have no problem dealing with any of them. And the dialogue is just hilarious, the characters are so cute and you, BK, you are always in denial, always refusing to admit what you did wrong and the gameplay loop is pretty addicting. The visual visuals are phenomenal, they're so simplistic yet so colorful and cute, and I adore the music. This took me about 3 hours to complete and it was a total joy to play in one sitting. For that I invite you to try Donut County, it's very cheap and you can get it on sale for $3. All I want to say thank you Tark so much for inviting me, have a bubbly day everyone, bye! Thank you, Bubbles. A fun and interesting recommendation, as always. Next up, let's hear from Gaming with Spoons, who I've talked about on this channel before, and you may have seen me on his channel as well. Perception is a video game that gives us a unique experience that only video games can give us. By utilizing mechanics within the video game and immersing the player into its world, we take the role of Cassidy, a young girl who is blind and decides she is going to go off into this mansion she keeps having dreams about to investigate what's going on. By using her cane to tap around and using echolocation, this is how we see the environment and what is around us. The catch is, if you use it too much though, it awakens awakens the entity and the entity will come out and attack. Cassidy also uses her phone in very different ways to get information that she needs to find out what's going on or what certain things are. Sitting around about five hours to complete the main story, it does make the qualifications to play this game. If you do want to collect everything, it is going to be a little bit longer than five hours, but if you're looking for a really unique game that's going to give you a very different perception on what a video game can achieve, Perception is definitely a game that is worth checking out. Definitely an interesting game, and one of those experiences that, yes, only video games can really give you. Our next guest has quite a lot to say about a rather short hike. Daniel Santos, take it away. 
RPGs are more often than not lengthy adventures centered around saving the world by exerting violence on monsters and villains. There's obviously nothing at all wrong with this. Some of the most beloved games of all time follow this very broad structure. But no matter how much an individual deeply loves this genre or this structure, it can become tiring to exclusively play the same sort of thing back to back. Therefore, there will be times you'll want to break away from that familiar experience. With that in mind, I present to you A Short Hike. This adorable little title isn't about moral quandaries or defending kingdoms. It's simply about exploring an island and getting to know a colorful cast of characters. The protagonist's phone has no reception, and their goal is simply to reach the highest peak to see if they can get the call that they've been waiting for. What makes a short hike so delightful is that how you reach the top is entirely up to you. There are multiple ways to do so, and the game offers many tools with which the player can utilize to accomplish this. However, I would highly suggest simply taking your time. Rushing to the top, I feel, is somewhat missing the point. The island is meant to be explored by observing your surroundings from every angle. But more than that, you're also supposed to goof off and indulge in other activities as well. There may be an explicit goal in order to finish the game, but it's not really about that. Thankfully, more than just the generic, it's the journey, not the destination subtext we've seen countless times, a short hike promotes a more nuanced perspective. That while solutions can be brute forced, they can often be solved more easily when approached differently. Ultimately, this is a game that promotes lateral thinking, that it is often the indirect and creative solutions to problems that turn out the best. Even putting aside the deeper meaning of it all, this is simply a wonderful experience to play. From the charming Animal Crossing-esque visuals, the calming soundtrack, as well as the fun platforming and gliding mechanics, a short hike is true to its name in every sense. If you need a break from exploring vast kingdoms and realms, take a moment to familiarize yourself with this charming little island instead. And the last game I want to look at today I played a while ago, but never really had a way to talk about on this channel until now. Let's look at Asterbreed. Asterbreed. Asterbreed is a bullet hell shoot em up on PC, PS4, and Nintendo Switch from developers Edelweiss, who you may know from a certain game that is anything but similar to this, Sakuna of Rice and Ruin. When it comes to short, crazy, and fun experiences, there is no genre that ticks all the boxes more than shoot em ups, and Asterbreed is an easy to recommend, fantastic example of the genre. Mixing shooting mechanics, special attack meters, perfect dodges, and melee attacks, Asterbreed's Eye of the Needle gameplay offers some of the most frenetic action the genre has to offer while still being accessible for genre newcomers. Though you can expect to die a lot, the title is fairly forgiving despite how crazy it all looks. This isn't quite Toho or Ikaruga we're dealing with here, even a newbie can hit the credits. Though the game can be beaten in two and a half hours, those who struggle may find it taking closer to four. Asterbreed also has a properly included story that unfolds between stages and like, I mean yeah, it's it's here. Some people might like the story, but I found it kind of silly and nonsensical. So this was one I was really into strictly for the gameplay, and man did I get way more than I was expecting the first time I fired this one up. If you ever just want to play a game that makes you feel like your reflexes are way better than they actually are and you're defying death around every turn, check out Asterbreed. It's a lot of fun and you will not regret it. <laughs> So there you have it. If you ever need a palate cleanser or only have a very short amount of time to play a game, there is a good handful of games out there for you to check out. I'd like to offer one more thanks to all of the guests who helped me out on this video today, and you can find links to their channels in the description below. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful at all, you know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe, and share the video if you can. Links to all of my socials are in the description below, and as always folks, thanks for watching.